Uh, one of the decisions we made early on was to try to build a house that was going to provide um, not just for our lifestyle but also for the energy needs of ourselves and also for the community. So we made a decision early on to explore a house that generated uh, power in the form of photovoltaics. So we put 27 large photovoltaic cells up on the roof of our house, south facing. It produces about seven kilowatts uh, worth of energy at its peak. And um, already it's generated for us a couple thousand dollars worth of electricity uh, that we have either consumed in the house or we've redistributed back into the neighborhood as part of the BC Hydro net metering program. Sometimes we produce a surplus, uh, especially this time of year where, where there's a lot of sunlight and we've had some cooler weather lately. We've been pretty much uh, producing surplus every day for the last few days. The whole movement to co-housing or intentional communities, that's really was kind of the inspiration, I think, behind the project itself. The specific areas, you know, around sort of sustainable living and uh, the type of energy systems we have now, those inspirations really came from actually a lot of these type of communities that weren't just looking at how people could live together, you know, in a social covenant with one another, um, and lessen their footprint simply by having more people living in less space and building more efficient houses but also getting into things like the photovoltaic or our solar hot water system or the type of insulations that we've used on this house all the green technology that's really gone into this, this sustainable home that we've built together but it's been mostly that co-housing movement and those projects are popping up all over the place there's an amazing network of people doing this this model of, of shared living together. One of the challenges, of course, always comes down to money and how money is allocated for the different needs. So we had some really essential conversations early on about how we wanted the project to reflect our values, even if that meant that we had to spend a little bit more money than just doing things purely for economy. So the solar system is a good example of that because we spent about $27,000 for the photovoltaic system knowing that it's going to take us 10 to 15 years depending on where hydro rates go. So it's an investment into the future and some members of this project, some of our founders, may not ever realize the true value of that in their lifetime uh, or the lifetime here at the house, any other time here. But we know it's a legacy because these panels are going to produce decades after they're paid off and we just made that decision, you know. But the challenge was to think that far ahead and to be that aware of the future and not just make sort of immediate decisions based on, on budget and cost uh, right now in the short term. I think some of the challenges we faced was, you know, the how do we build a project like this when the zoning was new? and negotiating that with the city planning and eventually through public hearings and the city council themselves. And of course the biggest challenge is just, we, you know, there's uh, 10 of us in this project from the beginning that had to figure out together how to be and how to make decisions and all the multiple uh, design choices that we had in front of us. So just getting through that process together was a significant challenge and one that was um, actually quite rewarding to go through together. The, the kind of active systems in the house, they come with a pretty high price tag. So for us it made sense because we had six households all coming together and we were all able to share those costs. And it was also part of a new construction. I think when we're looking at a retrofit or a renovation of an existing home, I know that there are projects now, I think so certainly I think photovoltaics market and a growing um, opportunity for lots of people to look at when they get into renovations. But I think just some, some of the passive systems uh, of the house, I think I'm, I'm just as excited about the fact that we, you know, we put in a double layer of insulation around the whole house, that we put in you know, really well engineered windows that are specific to their orientation on the house, that there was you know, still have solar capture in the winter time and then a lot of solar reflection in the summertime, so that the house itself, even without any kind of active system in it, just passively is actually working with the environment as opposed to working against the environment that we're in. So the actual social model of the intentional community itself and this kind of cooperative. Um, so we wanted that to be visible and also accessible. So we're, we've done things like conversation cafes. We're gonna host a one here coming up here in August 
here's a house, which is more of a sort of an open house or an opportunity for people to come and learn more about these, this, this type of a project. And know that there are other projects that have some of the same values in place, but they've approached it differently. And uh, I think that there's a whole variety of opportunities to learn. So that's been one piece. I think the other was to just say that it's, it's possible to get together with a group of people sit down together, have some conversations, and uh, really develop something from your creativity and really trust yourselves and believe that it's possible to do this. Because that's simply our story. We didn't have a developer. There was nobody um, who came in as a professional to kind of uh, start this process. It was just a grassroots movement of a group of friends who came together and thought, no, it's possible to, to live this way. Let's see what, let's see what we can do together. My own involvement um, individually has taken me much more deeply into uh, political work because uh, I think there's some big questions looming about the kind of decision making we're going to have to make on a community level and that there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the world to learn from other, other experiments that are going on, there are explorations and some really creative programming uh, that's going on in other places around sustainable living, encouraging these kind of projects. So I see myself much more involved in the kind of larger societal conversations that are going on, particularly at the provincial level. Uh, one thing that just popped up for me is that something that, that our architect said early on when we were designing the house and we were wrestling with some of the building materials and we were wrestling with, you know, you know whether we were going to purchase all these sort of new things or not new things and how could we recycle some old material and uh, one of the things he said to us, he said, you know, you can do all of those things and you can spend a bit more money to, to kind of be more innovative and creative about those things. But Kevin, ke Kevin came back and said, really, at the end of the day, you know, you guys are taking uh, six households and then combining them together into one. That decision alone is a huge step towards sustainability, just simply making that choice more than probably anything else you're going to do on the house. That, that choice was about sustainable living. So, in effect... The families who live here now used to live in six different homes on six lots across Canada. Yeah, and then the duplication as well, because then the when you have six separate households, you need sort of six of everything. Whereas we're finding, you know, like for example, just the shared laundry, shared kitchen, tools, uh, just all of the things that go into a household, we're able to bring those together and consolidate them together. And it was interesting when we first moved into the house; it looked like an episode from The Hoarders. For us, it was also about uh, recognizing how much stuff we had and the ability to let go of it and to simplify. So we collectively in this house, we're living with far less stuff uh, than we all had when we lived in our own individual homes. So just that process alone of simplification and reduction was been significant. And I, <laughs> the one I was searching for, and uh, Mary was just helping me out a bit with it, was, uh, was this, was this quote from Margaret Mead. Uh, and it is that, uh, don't disparage a group of small people who want to make a difference as though they can't change the world. And she says, indeed, it's the only thing that ever has changed the world. This is a very small project in the midst of a whole bunch of huge societal questions and some really difficult choices ahead, I think, for us as a society. But I value the part that at least this small group of people is making an effort and engaging these questions and trying. And this is the way that we've come up with for being in the world. And it seems to work well for us. So. We're, we've been in the house for two and a half years now, and that learning just continues for us every day. Dan, it's been very enjoyable interviewing you here today and seeing your project, your home, and what a wonderful place it is. And we applaud you for your uh, leadership and mm -hmm. an example for the rest of the community. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. It's been great to, great to be able to talk to you. Thank you for interviewing me today.